Hello everyone. Um, happy Friday. I hope everybody is having a great day and excited for the weekend. I thought I'd join you here this morning. Uh, so lately I've been really leaning into um, spending a lot of time in the Word and and uh, trying to draw near and have a closer relationship with the Lord and wanting to hear from Him more. And on Monday evening, I was about ready to fall asleep and I hear in my head, preach inheritance. And uh, so I wrote that down and then I went to sleep and, and uh, good thing I didn't hear bike Zimbabwe because who knows where I'd be right now. Just kidding. But anyway, um, so I have been doing a study on that for this week to see what inheritance means. And I have discovered it means so much more than you think. So uh, let's get into what it means. One of the things that it means is uh, inheritance, your, her your God-given inheritance takes you out of the kingdom of darkness, Satan's kingdom, and into God's kingdom of light. So in Acts 26, 18, it says, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. And then Colossians 1, 12 through 13 says, giving thanks to the Father who qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. And he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And I really like those words. He's translated us. Taken, in, taken us out of the kingdom of darkness and translated us into his kingdom of light. It also means when you uh, inherit eternal life, you also, one of the first things that you, the first thing you get is you get the spirit. You get the gift of the spirit. So Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 says, In whom also, having believed, you were believed as key, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee and the gift of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, which is us, to the praise of his glory. And then Ephesians 1, 17, 19 says, and this actually, this, this, uh, these few verses here, I also like to pray this over myself because I think it's very important, but that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So you're drawing closer and closer into a closer relationship with the Lord through the power of the spirit. And that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches and the privileges of the glory of his inheritance in the saints is. And that what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe that again, the spirit, that power that's in us, according to the working of his mighty power. So we are given his spirit as an inheritance, and that spirit works in us. So the next thing that uh, inheritance gives us is it gives us freedom, and uh, it sets us free. So Galatians 4, 3 through 7 says, So also we, while we were children, we were held in bondage, under the Ill, elemental things of the world. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of son, as sons. Because you are sons, God, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no, no longer a slave, but you are a son. And if a son, then you are a heir, an heir through God. So, again, inheritance sets us free, takes us out from under bondage, under the law. Also, uh, going further along those, or no, actually, this, this next thing is on, we're actually uh, predestined. God put us here for a reason. Um, Ephesians 1.11, also we have obtained an inheritance, having be, been predestined according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will. Also, Jeremiah says in 1, five, before I formed you, uh, before I formed you in the belly, I knew, I knew you. Meaning, 
we were created on purpose for a season, for a particular time. We have all been placed in this world at a particular time, in a particular place for a reason according to his will. He put us here for his purpose. Um, also, uh, who are we? So who are we in the Lord? Revelation 1, 5 through 6 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and, a, forever and ever. Amen. So he has made us kings and priests of his kingdom. That's who we are. Not weak, ineffectual Christians. Romans 5.17 says, For if by one man's offense, meaning Adam, Death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So his death on the cross gave us dominion here on earth so that we reign because we are no longer under the rule of Satan. Satan doesn't want us to know us, know that. He wants all of this to be hidden from us. That's why it's really important to be in the word. 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness, out of Satan's kingdom, into his marvelous light, into God's kingdom. So, now, as I just said, Satan doesn't want us to know any of this. So because of that, there's warfare. He doesn't want us to be taken from his kingdom and placed into translated, as uh, I read to you earlier, into God's marvelous kingdom of light. So Romans 8, 16, 17 says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may be also glorified with him. So there's where the warfare comes in. Revelation 21, 7 says, He who overcomes warfare will inherit these things. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. So how do we fight? Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might, the spirit that is in us, working through us. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So you have to take on the whole armor of God. And um, as inheritors of God's kingdom, the angels are here to, here to help us. So in Hebrews, Hebrews 1.14, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits, that's referring to the angels, who are sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So believe it or not, the angels are actually there helping you by the word of God. Um, if only we had eyes to see that. So, our reward is also based on our stewardship. Now, having said that, you cannot earn the kingdom with your own labor. That is through the gift of God's death on the cross for us. Uh, but there are levels of reward, believe it or not. So, Colossians 3, 23, 24 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. So, 1 Corinthians 3, 8 says, Now the, he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So, your reward is based, your further reward, other than your inheritance that you get of the kingdom, in eternal life, um, you will have, there's, there's, will be tears, I'm guessing, of level of reward of what you get in, in heaven. So Luke 19, 11 tw through 26 also talks about this. And I know that you're all familiar with this story. And this is about the ruler 
um, that uh, gave talents and gifts, basically, to his servants. And then he went away to um, receive his kingdom. So this story is really about the Lord, okay? It's a parable about himself. So he goes to receive his kingdom, and when he comes back, he calls his servants or his people to him, and he takes an account. So the one servant who he gave 10 talents to, well, that servant says, well, I, uh, or five talents to, I, uh, you know, I made five more, and the, and the ruler says, well, that is great, good and faithful servant. I will give you five more, uh, and, you in, and you will inherit the kingdom. And then uh, the next one, he, he'd given three gifts to, he'd also doubled his, uh, his uh, talents and gifts, and so he was given three more. Well, the other one who was scared uh, hid his talents because of fear. And so the ruler says, you wicked servant, you, who you, what you have, I'm going to take away from you and give it to the others. So this, this signifies more than one thing. You can see that there is actually um, tier based, based on your stewardship of the gifts that you have been given is going to um, signify what your reward level will be in heaven. Um, and also, you need to understand that the gifts that you are given are not, are not for you. They are to bless God's people. He gives them to you for a reason. And you are supposed to use to labor, the, to, to steward those well and labor for the kingdom uh, for the purposes of God. So you should really consider that. So next, inheritance is wealth as well. So, um, in Galatians 3.29, it says, And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Um, Christians aren't meant to struggle. But since we don't understand what kingdom is, we, don't we, we walk in the flesh, we do not walk in our inherited spirit, uh, we struggle. And Abraham, he, he, gave, he, he gave up everything. He walked away from everything and did, he obeyed. He was in obedience and he was in complete and total faith. So he inherited the promises. He inherited one of them, it says, was the spirit first and foremost. And then we all know Abraham was rich in land and cattle and everything else. That is our inheritance. If you, relate, if you read Galatians 3, it says that we are blessed with faithful Abraham. So that is how we are, how Christians should live. But we tend to walk in our own strength. And we are carnal, unfortunately, and not walking. We're walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. So we struggle. Next, uh, Matthew, what does it mean? Who does and does not inherit the kingdom? Well, in Matthew 25, 31, it says, So when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, as the shepherd se separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on the left. Goats bad, sheep good. Then the king will say to those on his right, being the sheep, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me some.